Hi there, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Tom Funk here with your weekly trails report for the state of Michigan. It is November 14th, 2022. And thanks for joining us. I'm your host again, Tom Funk. I am the author of 50 Hikes in Michigan's Upper Peninsula and 50 Hikes on the North Country Trail. So, great back talking trails with you all. I was uh, releasing this podcast on a Saturday morning, and uh, I get ready for this like on a Thursday night, and uh, my schedule just wasn't allowing it. So I do have time to put this all together on a Sunday and get it out on a uh, Monday. So we're going to push it forward a little bit into the early week so you can hike all weekend, enjoy yourself, then come listen to the podcast and prepare for uh, next week and beyond. This podcast is brought to you by Gateway to Pitcher Rocks Lodging and Germ Fask in the middle of nowhere and everywhere at the same time. Consider them for your base camp for your next Upper Peninsula adventure, centrally located between Escanaba, eh? Marquette, the Sioux, and St. Ignace. They are less than an hour from both ends of Pitched Rocks. Check them out at the VRBO website. Write this down on the dust board, uh, 980761. So it's vrbo.com slash 980761. Thank you, Gateway to Pitched Rocks. All right, so uh, as a reminder how this works is I have like 30 different topics, and I'll rotate uh, 10 or so into them. Uh, into each podcast. Um, in addition, I'll probably have like five or so that will always be part of the show. For example, some of you are very excited and, and are just at the edge of your seat every week to hear the ever so popular permit report. That is right. At the near end of the podcast, we will tell you the permit situation on Michigan trails that uh, require permits for backcountry camping. All right, let's get this thing started. Hike of the week. I was uh, tooling around on the North Country Trail Interactive map uh, to prepare for the segment of the week, which is um, I consider probably the least used, most underrated, most neglected chunk of the North Country Trail. No, it's not in Kent County. It is way up in the UP. Everybody and their brother, myself included, we all go to uh, the Porcupine Mountains and hike the loops. But if you hike the North Country Trail to the uh, east, it goes into the Ottawa National Forest. Well, for years and years and years and years, the trail kind of took a southern route and uh, went by Summit Peak and Cross Boundary Road and then went into the Ottawa. Well, you go to the website and the trail on the planner has changed and it now takes a northern route along Lake Superior Trail, goes up the escarpment up to Lake of the Clouds, uh, continues on past, and it takes a due south, crosses South Boundary Road, takes you into the Ottawa. So it is about a 10-mile hump from South Boundary Road over to M64, which is basically the beginning of the Trap Hills. So what I tell folks to do, I, 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 I'm telling you guys, I must say this a 100 times a year, is, hey, Park at M64 and do a lollipop. Hike hike into the Ottawa. It's 10 miles to the Porkies. Do your loop. Come back. And then on your way back, maybe camp at the uh, the Big Iron River where they have just replaced uh, the bridge. And I saw photos of it recently. It looks pretty sweet. Um, so be glad that bridge is there because when I hiked that segment back in 1998, the bridge had washed out. And I had to take the long way, pull out a map and look at the long way around that little segment. So, um, yeah, the North Country Trail uh, is finally uh, being changed on the maps. It's funny because when I was writing the book on uh, the North Country Trail, um, got sent to publish and I got a message from the North Country Trail. Oh, yeah, um, by the way, we're moving the trail to go along the north route. I'm on Lake Superior, and I'm like, don't, but that was like five years ago. So I'm glad to see the change is finally uh, um, uh, happening. 
All right, hiker trash. I think you're getting a little tired or maybe a little excited every time we talk about Joan Young because she seems to be the only one that's out there doing any long-distance hiking right now. Um, yay, Joan Young, for finishing Wisconsin. And she has uh, crossed uh, uh, through the Porkies, and now she's kind of breaking up her hike uh, because it's snowing up there. Um, you know, the upper peninsula is, you know, probably outside of the boundary waters is the most remote, uh, part of the North Country Trail. So there's some logistical challenges, uh, for moving vehicles around and stuff like that. So last I saw, she was over in the Marquette area hiking around Little Garlic Falls. So you follow any of the uh, Michigan hiking pages, like Michigan Hiking and Backpacking, the North Country Trail pages, she posts a daily blog. Um, and it's uh, mykualityday.blogspot.com. Check it out. Um, she is uh, almost there. Um, so uh, that is pretty cool. Um, she shared some wonderful pictures of the Escarpment Trail. And uh, she showed uh, some photos of Copper Peak being way off in the distance. And uh, there's a, looks like, I think it's a old smelting a uh, factory with a big old smokestack. And any of you been up in that area, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So some pretty cool um, photos. Um, it brings back a memory. Last time I was on the Escarpment Trail, I found a lost family of hikers from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I uh, got them back to the parking lot at Lake of the Clouds. And, of course, they weren't carrying any water. Um, and funny, that is always the first question I'm asked about finding wayward hikers is, did they have water with them? Um, these guys did not, so um, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're okay now. So, anyways, uh, check it out. Check out uh, um, Jones' uh, hike and uh, follow along. So, if you'd like me to recognize anyone, visit my Patreon account uh, for more information. Anybody that's done an accomplishment or achievement or anything like that. All right, I am still waiting on a recipe from one of you guys, so uh, hurry up or you're going to get a great recipe on macaroni and cheese uh, next week. All right, trail conditions. Um, yeah, it snowed. How about that? But, yeah, just a light dusting. So if you look at the snow planner, you'll see a light dusting over the upper peninsula, the northern lower peninsula, and the west coast of the lower peninsula. Not really enough to snowshoe or snowmobile as of yet. Um, we'll see if it sticks around. Um, looks like temperatures are gonna um, be right about that level where it's, it, it's probably gonna melt off. Be my guess. So, um, North Country Trail. Uh, keep in mind that some segments of the trail are closed due to firearm hunting season. Um, this also applies to some of the private land conservancies. Call ahead um, uh, to see if it is open. And I'll talk a little bit more about hiking uh, during firearm season here in a minute. So wheel trails, they open December 1st if trail clubs uh, deem them ready. Uh, the thing is, in the Upper Peninsula, a lot of these trails go through swamps. And they got to make sure that not only, you know, there's not snow on the ground, but that these swamps are frozen because there's nothing worse than having a machine go into the drink because the ice hasn't frozen over completely. So that's uh, um, something else that they have to take into consideration um, in the uh, uh uh, snowmobile season. So, if you've ever wondered why, you know, you don't make a snowmobile trail into a hiking trail, well, that's why, because I got some great photos of snowmobile trails in the middle of summer, and it's, they go through swamps, so. Alright, um, skills test. There are a couple pages out there, um, uh, one is, uh, 52 hikes in 52 weeks. If you haven't joined that one, um, that is, uh, you know, a challenge to do a hike once a week. Um, another one that is out there is the North Country Trail 100 Mile Challenge. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that. If you uh, hike 100 miles in North Country Trail, you let them know, and they send you a cool certificate. Uh, you can also earn uh, uh, kudos and patches and things like that by hiking entire states or um, long stretches like 1,000 miles. And I believe Joan Young uh, coordinates that, but don't bug her right now. She's She's a little busy. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, this week in Facebook, um, not much going on in the pages. Not much people out there ooting a boot other than taking some photos and things like that. Uh, we have uh, some added events to the trail calendar. Uh, these are all on the Northern Michigan Hiking and Backpacking page. Seems that the Michigan Hiking and Backpacking page have exhausted all their events. Uh, they don't have anything coming up. But Northern Michigan Hiking and Backpacking... Um, Bloomer 
Park Night Hike on the Clinton River Trail. That's uh, Wednesday night, November 16th. Uh, still have the High Country Pathway Backpacking Trip uh, Friday, December 2nd through the 6th. There's a four-day Pigeon River Country uh, Forest Winter Camp, and that is Saturday, December 10th to the 11th. Um, and that is uh, uh, going to be taking place uh, th- through the, net and the Northern Michigan Hiking Backpacking page. And big announcement, after being virtual for two years, the Quiet Waters uh, uh, symposium, now renamed the Quiet Adventures Symposium, is taking place March 4th at Michigan State University. If you've never been to Quiet Adventures, uh, it was originally made for canoers and kayakers, but it's expanded to the, basically the non-motorized sport user, bicyclists, backpackers, hikers, uh, and the like. It is an awesome event. I have presented at it many times. Uh, you can meet some great people there. Uh, some years, some of the, I remember one year, the Michigan Hiking and Backpacking page actually had a booth. That was pretty cool. So you gotta check out this event. It's a one day event, or, uh, in, uh, Michigan State University, and, uh, totally worth, uh, your time. So March 4th, 2023. All right. It is November 14th, and that means tomorrow is uh, somewhat of a public holiday in the state of Michigan, and that is that's because it is the start of firearm deer season. So at about this time of year, I start to see um, you know a fair amount of conversations on these Facebook groups regarding hiking during hunting season, uh, particularly uh, firearm deer season. Now keep in mind that uh, you can hunt deer. Um, solid nonstop, basically from October 1st to the end of, uh, December, one way or another in public or private land, and there's some weekend hunts before that. So deer season is pretty long in Michigan, but the really big one where there's lots of people out in the woods is definitely the firearm season, which is the 15th through the 30th. So, um... You know, I see uh, concerns raised about the safety of hiking and uh, things like that, uh, the, which is cool. I'm glad people are asking the questions. thing is, I see crazy answers out there that drive me nuts. Uh, most of them are matter of fact, and they're sensible suggestions, but sometimes I just see outright conjecture and fabrications as far as the safety of uh, hiking in the woods during firearm season. So... Um, I always recommend just don't hike during the fire and deer season and give these guys their 15 days. You know, I hunt, I fish, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't hike during firearm deer season. So, uh, it's 15 days. It's not going to kill us to stay out of the woods. Um, you know, another point that I like to bring up is there are some people are trying to pit hikers versus hunters, and I think that's counterproductive to both groups. Uh, because we both groups love uh, the outdoors and we love to explore. Um, many people uh, that belong to these these hiking groups and listen to the podcast, myself included, you know, I developed my love of the outdoors through hunting and fishing. My father and grandfather put a 410, which is a shotgun, in my hands and took me hunting when I was a little kid. I still have the 410. And uh, uh, my son is now uh, in possession of that and has learned how to shoot it. You know, hunters, through an excise tax put on firearms and ammunition, have provided billions of dollars in conservation funding for purchasing land, funding wildlife projects, and hunter safety programs. So this is the financial foundation of the North American model of wildlife conservation. Go ahead and Google that. North American model of wildlife conservation. Our wildlife is a common resource to be enjoyed by all, and we have delegated their management to state and federal wildlife agencies and funded through these excise taxes on ammunition and firearms. From this model and the funding, hikers and anyone else who enjoys the outdoors, we have millions of acres uh, uh, and thousands of miles of trails to enjoy, and that's just in Michigan. And as far as safety while hiking during firearm deer season, um, you know, this is a personal choice based on your comfort level. When I'm asked what precautions one should take while hiking during firearm season, my response is typically wear your seatbelt because you're more likely to die in transit to the trailhead than from a stray bullet. And if you truly are uncomfortable, that's fine. No need to come into these Facebook groups and spread misinformation about how far you think a bullet can travel or where the rifle zone is. Just don't go hiking. 
during the times you feel uncomfortable. That's cool. And we have a lot of people um, that are new to hiking in these groups and listening to this podcast. You know, no need to spread misinformation. I encourage new hikers and anyone else to learn about the North American Model of Wildlife Conservation, the funding model, which is the Pittman-Robertson Funds. And uh, just Google these things. You can learn all about them. And as a hunter, I can tell you I will use a trail, such as the North Country Trail, to access a hunting area. However, I won't hunt anywhere near it. Why would I hunt near a trail where I know hikers may be using it? In addition, I don't want to go on hikes during fire and deer season. As you know, again, I don't want to ruin someone's hunting experience they've been waiting for all year. So if you do uh, hike during the fire and deer season, there are plenty of places that do not allow hunting that you can hike. Uh, you'll need to do your homework. Virtually all state and national public lands are open to hunting. Private land conservancies are good alternatives, along with trails within city or village limits where hunting is not allowed. Of course, even a property, you know, does not allow hunting. Not everyone gets the memo. Wear orange and uh, make sure a hat and a vest. So keep in mind, hunting and, and uh, hiking are not mutually exclusive activities. There's a great overlap between the two. We both love the outdoors. We just do it in different ways. Each group having respect for the other is the way to do things. So there you go. I got to pontificate for a little bit. All right, are you ready for the permit report? Permit report. Uh, permit report. Okay, so nothing's really changed since last time. Uh, Pitchard Rocks Reservation System opens January 1st. Grand Island Reservations opens uh, in, a, in a couple weeks on November 26th. Porcupine Mountains Reservations are being accepted now for dates six months ahead from today's date, so through April. Craig Lake, reminder, sites have to be reservation only. Uh, in 2023. Squabinon Falls State Park backcountry cannot be made online but in person. Um, however, rumor has it you can call and make arrangements. And please, no stealth camping in our state parks. Make arrangements. You have to use their designated campgrounds. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, Snowmobile Trails officially open on December 1st. So, uh, provide, of course, there's enough snow. And snowmobile season runs through the end of March. And in some years, if there's a lot of snow, uh, some trails will extend their season. All right, weather forecast. Well, it looks pretty normal for this time of year. Uh, it looks like in the UP, highs right around or just below freezing and lows into the teens. And uh, for our peeps in the Grand Rapids area, you know, Highs right around freezing to just above freezing, lows um, below freezing with bouts of light snow. So not enough really to snowshoe or, or cross-country ski, but uh, it is coming. All right. Hey, start to hear some music come back. I'd like to thank Adam Main, my buddy in Calms, Michigan, for letting us use his wonderful music. Thank you, Adam. And uh, I'll be home in Michigan in December and uh, still looking possibly to do a group hike and a presentation somewhere. Uh, still uh, working on the details uh, for that. Again, thanks to our sponsor, Gateway to Pitchard Rocks, for sponsoring this podcast. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in sponsoring the show, check out my Patreon account. Reach out to me. Let me know. See what we can do. All right, uh, let's see, quote to end the show. Look deep into nature and you will understand everything better. And that's from Albert Einstein. All right, thanks for joining us. Make sure to follow us on uh, Facebook, Tom's Trail Tales, which covers the Great Lakes. And then there's uh, Tom Funk's World Adventures, which covers the rest of the planet. I'm also on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, Tom's Worldly Adventures. And uh, I will put my transcript of the show on the Substack, which is thomasfunk.substack.com. Do, do you have an All Trails account? Uh, follow me, Thomas Funk. And the Patreon account is patreon.com backslash Tom Funk. All right. Thanks for joining me. 
And we will see you next Monday.